Now our high energy electron carriers, it, they've actually calculated how many ATPs can be produced from each individual high energy electron carrier. So what they've seen is that if you have an NADH, you get about 2.5 ATPs from that. From the energy in the electrons carried by NADH, you'll produce about 2.5 ATPs. From the energy uh, carried by an FADH2, it's about 1.5 ATPs. If you add up the whole thing, you're going to get, I think it's 26 to 28 um, ATPs total from this whole process. And again, it's not 100% efficient, so uh, there, there is some variation there. If we were to do our bookkeeping over the whole thing, if we were just even to keep track of only ATP, if we know that we're getting about, uh, from the electron transport chain, let's just say we're going to get uh, about, wow, it says 32 ATPs here, but I'm not exactly sure why there's 32 of them because I think that I want to say that there's 28 ATPs coming out of here. Let's just say, let's go with the higher number. From the citric acid cycle, do you remember that we actually ended up with two ATPs? And the same thing from glyc glycolysis, we actually ended up with two ATPs. And so our grand total is 32 ATPs from what? From one molecule of glucose. From one molecule of glucose, we were able to produce 32 ATPs to use in whatever capacity that is necessary. Now, this whole process is, uh, there's, there's variations on the theme. We just did from glucose. We just, we just gathered energy from glucose. You know that you eat more things than just glucose, and you can get energy from more things other than just glucose. So let's look at some variations on this pattern, and then we're going to do a gigantic review of the whole process so that you can visualize the whole thing.